When the Spanish first arrived in Pensacola, Florida, they decided to build a fort guarding the entrance to Pensacola Bay. Fort San Carlos de Austria was constructed in 1698, but would be captured and destroyed by French forces in 1719. After the French and Indian War, or Seven Years' War for you Europeans out there, the area of Pensacola passed to the British in 1763, who began building harbor fortifications. In 1781, the Spanish captured Pensacola, and in the 1783 Treaty of Paris, the area was once again passed back into Spanish hands. Here, the first permanent structure would be constructed in 1797 and called Fort San Carlos de Barrancas. In Spanish, Barranca means bluff, and when you stand on the fort, it's easy to see why it was named. Yeah. They would just fire a cannonball out and bounce it off the water. In 1814, the Battle of Pensacola would commence, with Andrew Jackson leading the American forces along with Indian allies against the British, Spanish, and Creeks. He would return four years later and force the surrender of not only the garrison, but all of West Florida. After the purchase and statehood of Florida in 1821, Pensacola was chosen as a major naval yard, and between 1833 and 1844, a string of forts would be constructed to protect the harbor, with Fort Pickens on Santa Rosa Island in 1834 and Fort McRae on Perdido Key, now underwater, in 1839. Fort Barrancas too was reconstructed and expanded on the foundation of the Spanish fort. All right, now to go down this little cubby hole and into the Spanish part of the fort. That's a little steep. Oh, there's the, the walkway from back at the guardhouse. Watch your head. You're claustrophobic, I would not advise this. Or if you want to live a little, go ahead and do it. Like Nike said. We are in the Spanish part of the fort. Currently standing on top of the old Spanish parapet, and behind me is Fort Barrancas. They built directly on top of the old Spanish fort and kept it completely preserved until the 1950s when it kind of fell into disrepair and then they started to rebuild it. It's definitely a cool site, definitely well preserved, definitely worth the trip. According to the National Park Service, 6 million bricks would be used to build the structure with 4 foot thick walls that were 20 feet high. It could protect the harbor entrance as well as defend against any water or land attacks. In fact, walking up to the fort from the visitor center, it's hard to tell it's even there as the top blends in with the bluff it was built into. An advanced redoubt built a thousand yards to the north would also be constructed and connected by a trench line. All right, so currently we are traveling through the outer wall of Fort Barrancas. And you go down this stairwell down here and you walk underneath the moat above us and you take this flight of stairs up and you're back inside the fort. Overseeing this construction was Captain William Henry Chase of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Originally from Massachusetts, he fell in love with the Pensacola area and resigned his Army commission in 1856. Ironically, when Florida seceded, it looked to Chase to lead the militia and capture the Navy Yard as well as Fort Pickens. Fort Pickens was easy to defend and impossible to capture, so the Union evacuated Fort Barrancas and settled in at Pickens. In March, now a Confederate state, the militia was relieved by Confederate forces under General Braxton Bragg, 
men from Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi would be stationed at the fort. Foolishly, in October, the guns of Fort Barrancas exchanged fire with those of Fort Pickens, but it had little effect. A few months later, Union forces under General Benjamin Butler took New Orleans, and the Confederate forces abandoned the fort. It would see no further action after 1862, and would be used as a signal station, small arms range, and storage area, and manned by four black regiments, the 25th, 82nd, 86th, and 97th U.S. Colored Troops. So this is the walk inside of the fort proper. And there's the dry moat and the outer wall over there. And this whole passageway leads all the way around. By 1946, coastal defenses like Barrancas had become obsolete, and on April 15, 1947, it was deactivated. It would be incorporated into Naval Air Station Pensacola. In 1971, Congress designated the Gulf Island National Seashore as part of the National Park Service. After $1.2 million spent on restoring the fort, it was opened to the public in 1980. Fort Barrancas is an impressive structure and is well preserved. One unique feature that was pointed out by the park ranger is that not only are there arches above and below, but also the walls are arched and topped with sand to better preserve it. Also, it was built with less bricks than some of the surrounding forts. This piece of history, however, is not being as appreciated as it should be. As with everything in 2020, the park was closed due to COVID and a shooting that had occurred at the flight school, which prolonged its closure until just recently in 2023. Then there's the security gate to go through as it's located on an active military base. This could deter a lot of people who don't know it's tucked back past the West Gate. Finally, the Naval Air Museum is located in front of it, which draws in a lot of visitors. Additionally, there's a lack of help to keep the fort open past 4 p.m. As the park ranger was telling my dad and I, Fort Barrancas is so tucked away, some members of the military at the Naval Air Station don't even know it exists. If you're in the Gulf Shores area or feel like taking a road trip, I highly advise visiting this place. It's a glimpse into the past and it truly is one of a kind. Be on the lookout for some more videos from my trip to the Florida Panhandle and the Mississippi River and check out some of my previous videos on my YouTube page. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.